Okay, here we've got a hanging mass. 50 kilograms is the mass. Um, and it's attached to the ceiling with a series of three cables as shown. Now this is a good example of a translational equilibrium question where it's clearly not moving. So our net force must be equal to zero, which means the sum of all our forces has to add up to zero. And we're going to look at that in both the x direction, sum of all the forces in the x have to add to zero, and we're going to look at that in the y direction. So we're going to use components for this question. Now the reason I'm choosing components is because I already see from the question we've got a lot of symmetry. Both cables are at 40 degrees, so they're both going to be under the same tension, and the mass is hanging straight down. So components, from my experience, will be a lot quicker for this particular question. Now all the forces for these questions, they all converge at this point right here. So pulling down on it, is the actual force of gravity provided by the 50 kilogram mass. So there's Fg. And then from the sides, we've got our tensions. The tension is pulling up to the upper right. Simultaneously, the other cable is pulling it to the upper left. Now, because they're both 40 degrees, we can label them both T1. They're both going to be the same. Now, if you look at just the mass, the reason why I know that this little cable here has the same tension as Fg, if I just look at the mass and draw it separately on the side, there's my mass. What's attached directly to the mass? Well, I've got a force of gravity straight down. It's not moving. And as far as the mass is concerned, the only thing that's holding it up is that cable. So the tension in that cable has to be exactly equal to Fg, which is why I've just cut to the chase and labeled that Fg. Now, I've redone the diagram down below. Notice where I've labeled the 40 degrees. If this is 40 degrees with the ceiling, if I draw a dotted line that's parallel to the ceiling, these are alternate interior angles, and they'll be 40 degrees as well. That rule comes up a lot in physics. So that angle and that angle are both 40. Same with down here. These are both 40 degrees. So here's my, my diagram, my better free body diagram. So I've labeled my two tensions, both labeled T1, force of gravity straight down. And then because T1 is at an angle, those are the ones I've chosen to break down into their components. There's a component in the X direction, which I call T1X. There's a component in the Y direction, T1Y, pulling it up. And on the other, the other ones like the mirror image, you'll get T1X to the left and T1Y up as well. Now, if I look at my horizontal forces, We know they have to add up to zero, and all that means in the physics world is that they have to be balanced. So in other words, this component of, the, of T1x has to be exactly equal to this one. Even if these ropes or these cables were at different angles, those two x components have to cancel each other off, simply because they're the only x components in the question. So really all we got is T1x on the right has to equal T1x on the left, which is not overly useful, but at least we've identified some physics there. Now, vertically, it's a little bit more useful. Now, again, it has to be balanced. So the sum of the forces in the Y have to add up to zero. So there's our starting point. The other way of saying the sum of the forces in the Y add up to zero is to use the fact that it's balanced and just say that the forces in the upward direction have to be equal to the forces in the downward direction. They have to cancel each other off, in other words. So we can choose to use the sum of the forces equal to zero, or I can choose to use this one. Let's try this one. What forces are acting in the upward direction? Well, I've got T1Y and another T1Y. Those two are up. Downwards, the only other vertical force is FG. So there's my equation. I've got two T1Ys. I know the formula for Fg, it's just mass times gravity. So I end up getting, if I kind of go up over here, T1y is mg all divided by 2. Now T1y, you can see on our picture, is simply a component of T1. How would I calculate that? Well, see how it's the opposite to this angle? So we're trying to figure out the hypotenuse. So the trig function that links opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So if I write that down here, I get sine 40 degrees is opposite 
over hypotenuse. And remember, we're not trying to find T1Y, we're trying to find T1. So I'm going to rewrite T1Y as T1Y is equal to T1 sine 40. Right? In other words, I'm multiplying both sides by T1. Now let's take that and plug it in over here. And I get T1 sine 40 equals mg over 2. And then I can finish my question. T1 is whatever mg over 2 is, all divided by sine 40. Now my mass is 50 kilograms. 50 times 9.8 is 490 divided by 2, and then whatever that is divided by sine theta. And I end up getting 381 newtons.